Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays today, where you boys always have something to say with the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And I'm your host, Adam Paddle. And today, guys, we got to talk about the last 48 hours that is going down in Blue Jay land. You have former Blue Jay Matt Chama coming out and talking about his negative experience with the Toronto Blue Jays, and as well, current Blue Jays like Bo Bichette and Chris Bassett, what they had to say about the management and about their futures with this team. There's a lot of stuff we got to break down, guys, and reassess is this the right path for this Blue Jay team moving forward? Before we get to it, guys, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Blue Jays today. Now, you were looking up today a little bit earlier. More news, more stuff that's coming out with former Blue Jay Matt Chapman talking about his experience with Toronto. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, well, I mean, as we can all remember, Matt Chapman, you know, comes over to Toronto. The expectations are high. Never really hits that level that I think a lot of people were hoping for. And... I guess the biggest question was why? Was it the fact that Matt Chapman is just not a very good baseball player? Was he, you know, just never really finding his groove in Toronto? Maybe a little bit of both. He came out recently, was talking about his current experience in San Francisco and how mm -hmm. he is really enjoying himself right now. In fact, he said, I don't think I, or, okay, this was in uh, reference to an extension mm -hmm. with San Francisco. So he said, I don't think I was as comfortable maybe in Toronto the last couple of years as I am here mm -hmm. with San Francisco. Sometimes your environment has a lot to do with that. And it's just a good environment for me. I definitely mm -hmm. enjoy playing on the West Coast and playing for Bo Mel, which is the uh, Giants mm -hmm. manager, Bob Melvin. I'm comfortable. So just with that stuff right there, it's very clear, you know, very comfortable in San Francisco, not comfortable at all in Toronto, very comfortable with the manager, Bob Melvin, maybe not so much with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays guys that right. he, was, he was with, right? So that is something going down with Matt Chapman right there. And really, this wouldn't, this wouldn't be too much of a talking point had we not also seen very recently Maybe a little bit of a fractured relationship going on with Bo Bichette and the front office right there because he does not want to come back in free agency when his time is up. And then also, too, all of the comments that Chris Bassett said because he had oh, yeah. quite a lot to say. So kind of all of those things just like compiling on top of each other. What do you make about that as a whole? And what do you make about these Matt Chapman comments? Yeah, to finish off the Matt Chapman comments, obviously you can interpret it many ways. You can interpret it the way that I think we are, where it's, yeah, um, clearly if we wanted to keep this guy around or we wanted to make him perform better, not make him perform better, but have him perform better, maybe you could have created a little bit better of an environment that supposedly Shapiro and Atkins have said they've created such a good one, right? But it doesn't look like it's that way. But granted, it could just be the individual's experience and we might just be reading into it too much. However, I do think that with this comment, Bo Bichette's comment that we broke down on our last uh, podcast talking about how he doesn't want to stay in Toronto beyond 2025. And then you have Chris Bassett kind of walking himself back after saying on the Chris Rose rotation that, hey, uh, there's a lot of issues that are unfixable here. Then he had to take those comments back and rework them. Maybe someone had something to say there. I kind of take it that this way, look, the Blue Jays, they had a lot of expectations in the last two seasons, and that included Matt Chapman being on this team. But however way you put it, the, those expectations fell short. If there's a miscommunication between the upper management and the lower, uh, or the guy, the players on the field, clearly there was something there because the way they thought they were going to the season could roll out was going to be a lot different, either maybe through free agency or maybe through contract extensions. But there's been a lot of miscommunication going on between the upper management and the lower management. So there's something to be said about that. Yeah, I mean, just connecting the dots here, like hearing everything that these guys have to say, it does feel like there is just a disconnect between mm -hmm. the front office, the management, the uh, the coaching staff, and then the players as a whole. And I mean, like, look, we're not fucking idiots here, guys. We, we watch the games. We know that there is clearly something wrong with this team and with this organization. And if everything was moving like a, like a cohesive unit, we'd probably be playing a hell of a lot better baseball. And that is just not the case. So, uh, I mean, I almost wish that Matt Chapman would have, like, went further into this and talked about exactly what it is that did, that right. made him uncomfortable. But again, similarly to what Chris Bassett had to do, I mean, you know, you come out, you say these things, and then you inevitably need to come back and start backpedaling right. because you also got to factor in your career as well. You know, you're kind of doing a little bit of a balance beam act right yeah. there. Yeah, and with the Chris Bassett comments, I do think it's very interesting. We kind of talked about it a little bit on, the, uh, on our Blue Jays live stream the other mm. night, but 
it's so funny how as soon as he shows up to the ballpark, he has to clarify his comments. You know, and I again, I'm not playing conspiracy theorists here and being like, oh, like was someone trying to make him say those things? Well, I think he might have realized that it was interpreted in many, many ways, and maybe he did want to realize it. You know, what he was basically saying was, yeah, what what happened with the Shohei Otani incident is the reason why we couldn't go and get uh, any guys to be competitive. But then he had to clarify saying, no, 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 what I meant by that was, there was literally nobody like Shohei Otani, but I think there was a little bit of truth in what he originally said where you go and try to get Shohei Otani, and he referenced that the front office did not have a plan. And I've said this on the live stream. A guy like Chris Bassett coming to Toronto and signing here, clearly he was sold a bill of goods and said, hey, we're going to build a competitive team and get you run support. And they did not do that, and they couldn't pivot, and that's why they're losing a lot of ball games early mm. in the season. There's more problems now, but that's why they're losing a lot of ball games early in the season. So I think that uh, there's another disconnect right there from what you're, the front office is selling these players to the players on the field. Um, my point is, if we're moving forward in this whole organization, trying to be competitive in 2025, mm -hmm. how is how are we going to trust that this front office is going to do a good good job in that? When we've seen the last couple of years, they failed pretty bad. Yeah, it's I mean it's a it's a really tough spot to be in. I mean I think that all of these things, like when you're hearing your guys come out and start to, uh, you know, kind of slowly move in a negative direction about the team that they were either formerly on or the team that they're currently on. It means that something's not right there. And, you know, Rogers Communication Company has got to see the writing on the wall here and go, shit, like, why are all mm -hmm. of these star mm -hmm. players coming out and not feeling so good about this unit that we've built? Like, is it just the, the drinking water in Toronto? Probably not. Uh, maybe it's the guys that we have employed. Yeah. And I think that yeah. that's something that you need to really start looking at. Going back to those Chris Bassett comments, like the, the one that really stuck out to me, um, you know, other than the Shohei, uh, Shohei Otani mm -hmm. stuff, because I think the, the Shohei Otani stuff that he said was very accurate, yeah. right? You know, it was Shohei Otani or it was bust, and we watched the bust transpire. But he also said that he could sit there and he could talk for 45 minutes about all of the inherent problems that are on that are with this Toronto right. Blue Jays team, the organization. And he said, you know what, I don't, I don't want to do that because I don't really want to out my teammates. I don't want to out these other people in this staff, which is totally understandable. At the end of the day, these are the people that you work with. These are your friends. Mm. But... There's a lot of fucking problems, you know, and, and he knows it. He knows where the bodies are buried. And similarly, Matt Chapman knows where the bodies are buried. So it's just like this ongoing pattern of kind of like a player not doing so well and not feeling so comfortable here in Toronto. And that's not something that you want to see because I'm starting to see a little bit of a little bit of, a, I guess, a, a pattern growing here. And mm. then also I'm correlating this to. What we saw with the Colorado Rockies a couple years ago, like that management consistently pisses players off and they never want to go there. I don't want to get the bad mm -hmm. rap among people in MLB, among players in MLB, that going to with Toronto or signing with the Blue Jays or right. being a Toronto Blue Jay is a bad idea because Ross Atkins is an idiot. Yeah, and uh, to Chris Pat Bassett's point, he did when he clarified, said like, oh, they treat the, you know, the families well here. And sure, you know, we don't know actually that point. We don't know what they, how they treat families behind the scenes. But in terms of a place to play and grow as a player, I, you know, yeah, you're right. I, I hope that we aren't getting that rap because it feels like the last two years, it's been like that. Mm -hmm. And when I look at uh, Mark Shapiro and what he said uh, in the, I think it was about two weeks ago and at this point, he came out and he was talking about how, the offseason plans, how we got to keep on going and doing what we're doing. He said he believed in stability and continuity. If you guys are OGs here, you know you've been hearing those words come out of this uh, front office. Stability and continuity, and those are competitive advantages of baseball. Now, what does he mean by continuity and stability? Is it doing the exact same thing every single time? And in and, and what areas are we doing the exact same thing every single time? But I'm going to re I'm gonna reiterate this. I think that's a bad idea because clearly what you've been doing the last two years is not good continuity. This is bad continuity, and it's got to change. And I think it's got to start with the guys up top if you want to make the whole system change. Yeah, absolutely, right? Like, I, I mean, I, I think that uh, I, I get what he's trying to say, and I understand that it's like, yes, you need to have it. You got to have a system, and you got to stick with it, and you got to trust it. It's, I mean, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, going to the gym or something. Like, you got to be, you got to keep doing it, or else you're never, you're never going to see your gains, right? Or whatever, but... With the Toronto Blue Jays, your workout regimen is fucked. You know, it's like you're you everything that you're doing at the gym is all wrong. So like we gotta go to we gotta see a personal trainer here, and that guy's gonna give us a whole new regiment because doing the same thing over and over again, and you know heading into free agency with the same idea, 
is not the right way to go about it. So there's, I just think that there's so many inherent problems with this management and the front office. And I kind of want more players to come out and to speak about their right. experiences in Toronto and talk about this because maybe that is what's going to well, spark a change here. Well, that, I think if they did come out and start talking about it, I think that means inevitably we're going into a deep, dark rebuild. Because for a while, we will then be known as the Colorado Rockies, the Oakland Athletics, and nobody will want to come and sign here. So time for a quick shout out to Betway. Betway is the best place to make all of your sports bets on all of your favorite teams. Betway is also in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Must be 19 years older to participate. And guys, please bet responsibly. Now back to the content. I think that's why they're being very careful with it. I mean, we're talking about it. Mm. You know, even us talking about it is, is putting a little digital imp uh, footprint out there of saying, hey, there's something going on here. But I think as fans, we got to know if there's something going on and why we're not performing, we deserve to know. You know, I, we, we pay money to see this team. I pay my Sportsnet Plus bill. I do all, you know, I, I buy jerseys. I commit my life to this team. And if there's something wrong and you're not doing a proper job, I feel like we got to have someone in there that could do the job right. Now, you know, to play a little bit of devil's advocate right here, I will say, because I'm sure some people are going to comment this, Vladdy loves it here. Uh, you know, I think George Springer loves it here. I, I think. think, you know, I, I, I think, think he you know, likes the money too. He, sure, he know? likes the money. I mean, and you know, we know that there's been other guys that have really enjoyed themselves mm. here. I mean, like Teos Hernandez, I think, again, I, I don't I know think. for sure, but like, yeah. I think he, he really liked it here. So it's not like a hard and fast rule here that like people come to Toronto and just hate it, but it does feel like recently anyways, recently. In, the, in the past 12 months or so, uh, it has kind of been this this ongoing thing where, you know, uh, like the relationship is starting to fracture here. And it almost feels like Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro and John Schneider and those guys, maybe at one point they had the respect and they had like the command of a locker room mm -hmm. and, you know, they had all that. But it feels like it's starting to slip away. And just like anything, it's like change has to happen. Change is inevitable. It's got to happen at some point. This is why we elect a new, you know, uh, right. president and a prime minister every couple of years. Right, because it's right. like... You know, you start to lose your way eventually, and right. it feels like that is really what's happened it, here with this Toronto Blue Jays management. It felt like they stopped doing the work after 2022, like in terms of uh, the roster management. I'm just talking straight from Ross Atkins' point of view right now. It felt like they stopped doing the work because they were they were relying on the guys. I mean, hell, our, our hashtag this year is to the core. Mm. And and while some guys, yes, are doing great, like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and a couple pitchers here and there. It's it wasn't it wasn't continuing to help this team. Like times change, people change, stats change, players change. We have to be able to continue to go with the change. And it felt like they stopped and they let the team go be what it is today. And yeah. they and they failed. And and Ross admitted it too. He said, I'm sorry. He admitted it to everybody. He failed. He didn't do his job. And that's a whole other that's a whole other issue well, of the 45 minutes you could go on about this. Ultimately, everybody, I mean, it, it's starting to look like there could be a bit of a disconnect here, but this is all speculation. So please let us know your speculation in the comments down below. Do you think that there is a little bit of a, a fractured relationship here with the front office and the players as a whole on the Toronto Blue Jays? And if so, how do they either mend that relationship? Or, you know, is it just not fixable at all and we need new guys completely? Please let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, guys, $3 a month to become a Patreon member. Shout out and thank you to all of our current Patreon members and to our YouTube members as well. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, Go Jays Go! Jays, go!